Loving Baba to each one of you, all Babas, dear lovers. That's okay. Now you sit down. You have to hold these two with you. That's right. Hold them like that. That's right. Talk about Baba, which you all will, I know, love to hear. This is before meeting Baba and how I met Baba, but this is many years before I met Baba. I was seven year, uh, six or seven years old, and uh, one day I saw Baba Jan on the street, walking on the street. But I, and uh, she had a stick in her hand, a walking stick. The children were teasing her uh, on the roadside. Mischievous children were teasing her, and she was admonishing them. But they did not listen, and so she uh, put up a stick and. Uh, out of all the masters, this is what, how I felt. Now, do I start to say, when I, yes. we're talking, we're going to talk about how I met Baba first, but this yes. is uh, from the very beginning. And uh, it was when I was six or seven years old, and I was, we were boarders in the convent of Jesus and Mary. Yes. yes. So, um, uh, we used to come home for uh, holidays, and I was on the veranda of the house, and I saw Baba Jan walking on the st street towards her, where she used to sit on the tree. That was a mile away. I saw Baba Jan walking with a stick in her hand, but the children playing on the roadside were teasing her, pulling at her garment and running after her. So she had a stick in her hand. She once or twice gently admonished them, but they would not listen. So Baba Jan lifted her stick and scolded them. And of course the boys ran away and then Baba Jan continued her walk, walking towards her place near, uh, near the tree. And that's how I saw Baba Jan first when I was six and seven years old. But we did not know Baba Jan was a perfect master. None of my family, um, none of my parents knew. I mean, none of, uh, yes, my parents, you know, anyone knew my uncles, aunts, nobody knew about it. So naturally, we children also didn't know. So going to school, sometimes we used to see Baba Jan, sometimes we didn't see her. And so years went by, and when I was 10 or 11 years old, one day, um, my friend Zina Griba, she came to me at recess time, when after we had eaten in the afternoon, 12 o'clock, she came and uh, she, she, she said, Omera, do you know Baba Jan is a Buzug? Buzug means um, a perfect master, but an uh, elderly one. So. I said, yes, but uh, what about it? She says, we can go and ask her for anything we want and she will give it to us. So come on, we go and ask her for something, from her something. So I said, all right, come on, we holding our hands, holding each other's hand. We ran a, 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 uh, on the street towards Baba Jan and she, she, uh, the, my friend had seen Baba Jan seated behind the school wall where uh, there's a Christ, uh, Roman Catholic church and there's a wall between, and outside the wall, um, facing the street, there's, a, I mean, on the side of the street, a, a broad gutter for the rainwaters to drain away. So mm -hmm. it was a clean place with sand in it, and Baba Jan was sitting very comfortably. And uh, when we came near Baba Jan, uh, I was a bit, uh, uh, shy and hesitant, so I told my friend, you go first and ask. And so she went and asked Baba Jan. In the meantime, I tried to prepare myself to remember what to ask. And of course, I remembered I w wanted a horse. So when I came, to I all my courage. And, uh, and I thought, now what shall I ask? And all of a sudden, this thought came in my mind that I always wanted a riding horse. And my mother didn't buy one for me. Because as children, we used to ride when my father was living. And then after my father was no more, uh, 
we didn't have these horses to ride and I had uh, great love for riding. So this came in my mind that I should ask Baba Jan for a horse. So I look, looked up at Baba Jan and said, Baba Jan, I want a horse, a horse to ride. So Baba Jan looked at me and smiled very sweetly and looking at me in my eyes very gently as she then turned her head towards the sky and looked up at the sky, then looked at me, she nodded her he head and then again looked up at the s upwards and then she, uh, Baba Jan began to say something, but as a child and she sp uh, spoke in Urdu and very softly I could hardly catch the words, but very few words I could hear. She said, um, yes, you will get your wish. Um, uh, he will be such a such a beautiful one, such a great one, and so on. I could hear just a few words, and all the world will look at him, look up, look up at him. Something about uh, the world will admire him, love him. So I, I was thinking, oh, I will get such a beautiful horse that when I ride on this horse, everybody will look at me. I say, what a beautiful horse I'm riding. So I was feeling very proud when I heard a few words like this. And Baba Jan saying something more, I, which I couldn't catch. She turned to me and smiled and said, all right, beta, means yes, child, my child. Um, uh, now you can. So I and my uh, friend caught each other's hand and we both rushed to school because it was time to attend school uh, classes as the bell had gone. And so that was the time when I s actually contacted Baba Jan. That about Baba, Baba Jan me meant about Baba, and at that time I did not know. It was Baba she meant. I thought it was a horse she meant. and was happy about it at, the, at that time. He always spoke of Baba Jan with great reverence, with great love, so much feeling. And we felt that ba ba loved Baba Jan the best of, out of all the masters. This is what, how I felt. Now, do I s start to say, when I'm, yes. uh, we're talking, we're going to talk about how I met Baba first, but this yes. is uh, from the very beginning. And uh, it was when I was six or seven years old, and I was, we were boarders in the convent of Jesus. The best of, out of all the masters, this is what, how I felt. Now, do I start to say, when I'm, yes. uh, we're yes. talking, we're going to talk about how I met Baba first, but this yes. is uh, from the very beginning. And uh, it was when I was six or seven years old, and I was, we were boarders in the convent of Jesus and Mary. Yes. Yes. So, um, uh, we used to come home for our holidays, and I was on the, veranda of the house and I saw Baba Jan walking on the st street towards her where she used to sit on the tree. That was a mile away. I saw Baba Jan walking with a stick in her hand, but the children playing on the roadside were teasing her, pulling at her garment and running after her. So she had a stick in her hand. She once or twice gently admonished them, but they would not listen. So Baba Jan lifted her stick and scolded them. And of course the boys ran away and then Baba Jan continued her walk, walking towards her place near, uh, near the tree. And that's how I saw Baba Jan first when I was six and seven years old. But we did not know Baba Jan was a perfect master. None of my family, um, none of my parents knew. I mean, none of, uh, yes, my parents, you know, Anyone knew my uncle's aunts, nobody knew about it. So naturally we children also didn't know. So going to school, sometimes we used to see Baba Jan, sometimes we didn't see her. And so years went by, and when I was 10 or 11 years old, one day um, my friend Zina Gariba, she came to me at recess time, when after we had eaten in the afternoon, 12 o'clock, she came and uh, she, she, she said, Omera, do you know Baba Jan is a Buzug? Buzug means um, a perfect master, but an uh, elderly one. So 
I said, yes, but uh, what about it? She says, we can go and ask her for anything we want and she will give it to us. So come on, we go and ask her for something, from her something. So he said, all right, come on, we holding our hands, holding each other's hand. We ran a, 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 uh, on the street towards Baba Jan and she, she, uh, the, my friend had seen Baba Jan seated behind the school wall where uh, there's a Christ, uh, Roman Catholic church and there's a wall between and outside the wall um, facing the street there's a, I mean on the side of the street a, a broad gutter for the rain waters to drain away so okay. it was a clean place with sand in it and Baba Jan was sitting very comfortably and uh, when we came near Baba Jan uh, I was a bit uh, uh, shy and hesitant, so I told my friend, you go first and ask. And so she went and asked Baba Jan. In the meantime, I tried to prepare myself to remember what to ask. And of course, I remembered I w wanted a horse. So when I came to Baba Jan, near Baba Jan, Baba Jan, and uh, when we came near Baba Jan, uh, I was a bit uh, uh, shy and hesitant, so I told my friend, you go first and ask. And so she went and asked Baba Jan. In the meantime, I tried to prepare myself to remember what to ask. And of course, I remembered I w wanted a horse. So when I came to Baba Jan, near Baba Jan, Baba Jan, uh, uh, motion, uh, with a hand, she, how would you say, gestured uh, f to, for me to sit down in front of her. And she said, Beta, sit down, means my child, sit down. And I was seated and Baba Jan looked at me smiling and so I said, Baba Jan, I, I want a horse. <laughs> Baba Jan looked at me, smiled very sweetly and uh, then looked up at the sky and nodded her head, looked at me, again nodded her head and then she began to speak looking upwards and she spoke in Urdu language and very softly so as a child uh, I could not catch every word she said. And, uh, but the few words that I caught were, uh, oh, yes, you will have your wish. He, he'll be very, he will be very beautiful. Uh, everybody will look up to him and um, all the world will love him. All the world will come to him. And uh, a very, a very good looking, but everybody will love to see. Something like that. I caught a few words here and there. So I thought uh, Baba Jan meant about the horse. And so I was very pleased and happy that Baba Jan will give me such a beautiful horse that, that when I ride on it, people will just look at me riding a beautiful horse. <laughs> and so uh, Baba Jan, after uh, saying a little more, looking up at the sky, then she looked at me, smiled, nodded her head, and she says, all right, beta, my child, now you can leave. And so and my friend went back to school. And that was the first time when I contacted Baba Jan. I did not know about Baba Jan being the perfect master because we Zoroastrians had not this idea of perfect masters and saints in those days. We prayed to Zoroaster and we went to the fire temple and that's all. We didn't know about perfect masters. So then what happened was, um, let me see, it was when my mother knew about Baba Jan and she used to go to Baba Jan. And then sometimes she used to take us with her. And that time, then that was much later. I think that was after I met Baba. After I met Baba that I went to Baba Jan. And we used to be seated by Baba Jan's side, you know, one side and Baba Jan in the middle. And the men on one side, you know, Pathans in those days, the Punjabis were there, they were very big heavy built people and Mohammedans and they're all sitting on one side and the women on one side of Baba Jan. And Baba Jan would talk to them very softly and then she would uh, uh, turn her head, smile towards us women and say a few words. And of course, uh, we being a little further away, I could not un uh, catch all what she said. And I don't, anyway, don't remember if I did catch it few words. 
So Did she always have a lot of people around her? Oh, yes. She... Later on, in the very beginning, nobody knew about Baba Jan, so nobody used to visit her. But after Bab Baba was God realized, after some time after that, then people came to know of her. And uh, a few people always used to be around her. In the daytime, the Punjabis and the Mohammedans used to be, and the Hindus also. I mean, the Rastrians. First ones, I think, was my aunt, my mother, myself. The, at least I didn't see any other Parsis coming to visit Baba Jan. Now... How long was it since uh, you knew Baba Jan to when you heard about Baba? Well, actually, Baba? now, let me see. The fir after the first contact, because I was now, say, if I was 10 years old, after four years, because when I was 14, the first time I saw Baba, but it happened so that my mother knew about Baba, but, uh, but as we were schooling and children, my mother never explained to us about uh, perfect masters, and because we children wouldn't understand. In those days, nobody understood and we wouldn't understand, and she didn't find the need for us to know about it. She was herself. Uh, going to Baba, having darshan in Pune, and Baba never stayed for long in Pune. Uh, it was only for a, a day he would be there for 12 hours, and my mother would know about it. So she and my aunt both would go to have darshan of Baba, sit with him for a little while by his side near his feet and talk to him, and then so on. Now, if this is interesting, maybe you'd like to know about this. And that time when my mother was visiting, my mother knew a a Parsi family, a very rich Parsi family. Oh. And uh, this, uh, their daughter who was nearly 40, say, uh, she must be over 35, and she was not married, so the, she always tell my mother about it. So mother, my mother felt so bad for her, so when she went to Baba, my mother, my ba Baba asked my mother, if, is, any, is anything that she would want to ask him? So my mother remembered two things. One was my, ma my sister not feeling very well, you know, her health wasn't well. So my mother asked about my sister and uh, about this Parsi lady who, was, who, did not, who was not married up to such a big age. So Baba said, all right, you take your daughter and this Parsi lady and that we all should go to Udwada. Udwada is a pilgrimage place for the Zoroastrians where the biggest fireplace is. I said, all right, you take your daughter and this uh, Parsi lady and that we all should go to Udwada. Udwada is a pilgrimage place for the Zoroastrians where the biggest fireplace is. And there, of course, then my, my mother came and told us we were very happy to go to Udwada and there we went to Udwada and all that. And really, after returning from Udwada, my sister felt uh, very well in health and uh, she was all right. And the Parsi lady who had not married for so long, she got married. So my mother was more touched and more uh, this thing for Baba, much more feeling in love for Baba. That, but uh, this was a good deed that she, this lady got married. She was very happy about it. Now, it was like a little miracle to her. I mean, not a little or a big miracle, whatever you may call it. Anyway, that girl was happily married. Now. After that, uh, some time after that, my mother went to Sakori because Baba never had an ashram in those days. Baba didn't have an ashram, keeping men or uh, women also, nobody. And Baba was uh, visiting places, you know, uh, from Ajmer and other places Baba used to go to. So Baba traveling, he did not have a permanent place to stay. In. And that time, Merabad was not established. Baba had not seen Merabad at that time. Now it so happened, and I forget, what was it? Go to, yes, my mother one day, then she and her sister, uh, they both went to Sakori. They found out that Mir Baba has a master and he's in Sakori. And there they have a big ashram and their women and um, all the disciples lived there, so my mother was attracted, and so she went to Sakuri, and uh, she visited. And after a visit, she came back. Then she told us about 
this place, how beautiful it was and what a lovely atmosphere it is. We would like it. And so my sister didn't like the idea very much, but I somehow said, why not we go and see a new place? What is wrong? We'll have fun traveling. We haven't traveled for a long time. So my sister liked the idea, so we both agreed to go with my mother. And so we went to Sakuri to see Upasani Maharaj there. But it so happened that the morning we arrived there, um, we arrived in Sakuri uh, early hours of the morning, maybe it was 4, 4.30, and my aunt was staying in a room. My mother knew which room it was, so we, she told me to go and knock at the door. We knocked and we got in the room. We uh, had a rest and all that. And then morning, my mother said, now you all get washed and now go and visit the temple there, Upasni Maharaj's temple where Sai Baba's photo is also kept there and uh, and the artist said there. So we went to this temple and as we were nearing the temple at the, um, at the door we met this Hind a Brahmin girl, very uh, pretty looking Brahmin, Brahmin girl and she was Upasni Maharaj's sister's daughter and uh, she always liked Parsi people who came to Maharaj as disciples so she came very quickly towards us to receive us and she said, um, uh, when, where did you come from and all that and then come in and see and the temple here, Maharaj and Sai Baba's photos are worshipped. So as we were walking towards the, we were, walking, we were inside the temple as we were walking towards the little, and uh, how would you call it, it was a, uh, another little room, tiny room inside where large size Maharaj Upasni Maharaj's photo and Sai Baba's photo is kept in, a, I think it was silver uh, frame. And there they worshipped photo with flowers and all that and they said arti there. So this girl was taking us towards the photo and explaining. And in the meantime, uh, she heard footsteps coming down the uh, staircase. The staircase was outside in the courtyard, uh, outside the temple. So she said, oh, come on quickly. This is Merwanji. Merwanji is coming down the steps. You must see Merwanji. So I and my sister did not know who Merwanji was. So, but we rushed towards uh, the entrance of the temple. That is in the doorway. Stood we stood there in the doorway, and uh, we saw Baba approaching. But Baba, when he came very near, Baba was, was looking straight because we were standing on the side. And Baba was walking in, in, in front, uh, straight across us like this, you know, this way. You know how I mean? Like now we are on this veranda and Baba walked like this, straight and fast. And he was looking in front of him straight. He did not move his head. So we saw very, uh, I mean, uh, not much of Baba. Just Baba had a parent that... Uh, uh, like a mom, like a, how would you say, like it's not a sadra. Peran is a very thin, uh, soft material shirt and uh, and uh, white, loose uh, pants, you know, like the Indians wear. And Baba walked very fast in front of us, so we just got a glimpse of Baba's face. Uh, was looking very beautiful that time, but he was very thin in the face because he was not very well. Baba, keeping fast and all that, his tum stomach always used to be upset, it seems. And so he was walking very fast past us. And so we had a glimpse of the side face uh, and his curly hair. Very lovely golden brown curls, you know, dark uh, dark brown, but at the tips they were all shining brown and all curling round his head and Baba was walking fast. And that's the first time when I saw Baba. So before seeing Upasni Maharaj, we saw Baba. Now, uh, then we went to the uh, temple, we saw the temple and then after that we, after the, then the time was for the RT, we said the RT about 11 or 12 o'clock. And then we were told that we all now can go to Upasni Maharaj, to his hut. His, Upasni Maharaj's hut is made of um, earth, no, what do you call it? Um, walls, clay, mm -hmm. of clay walls and uh, thatched roof. 
very small and primitive. And so we went, all the women mandali went in, were seated by uh, Maharaj's side, one side the women, one side uh, the men, and Maharaj on his, um, on his sack, sackcloth, what did you call it? Gunny sack? Gunny sack. Gunny sack, he was seated on a gunny sack with the gunny sack wrapped around him. And we bowed down to him and we were seated and then he asked us where the new people come from Pune, oh yes, and he greeted us like how we were and so on. And he talked to the other people and in the mean, and by, at that time then uh, word, somebody told Maharaj that uh, Mer, uh, Merwanji is coming. So there was a little window, Maharaj looked out of the window, so yes, yes. And he was, he looked smi he smiled, Mara smiled very lovingly, looking towards Baba, coming from the gate towards him. And when Baba came, he Baba bowed down at Maharaj's footsteps, the uh, the not footsteps, how would you call it, the steps uh, climbing to the uh, to the hut, you know, the two steps that were there. So Maharaj ba Baba bowed down, touched the steps and touched his forehead. Two, three times, and bowing down, Baba entered the the hut. And while entering, Baba was bowing down so humbly and so much love and respect, and stood in front of Upasni Maharaj. And uh, Maharaj told Baba, "Yes, it's good you have come, but you will have to wait outside. So wait outside under a mango tree, under a shade. I will just come in a minute." I'll send this Bhakta Manli, mean all these disciples, uh, I mean these, yes, disciples, devotees, to their home, and then I'll come. So Baba, without uh, turning his back, Baba went out, bowing down with his hands joined, and Baba looked so beautiful. I looked up at him, he was looking so beautiful, facing Upasi Maharaj, and that's the second time I saw Baba in front of his master, bowing down to his master with so much love. And uh, then when Baba stepped outside the hut, he uh, bowed down again and touching the footsteps two, three times to his forehead. And he took Pradakshana. Pradakshana means going round the, uh, taking uh, round the, walking round the hut is called Pradakshana in Hindus. They, with great love and respect, they have, uh, with great love and respect, they must go round their, the, the place that they live in. No, you, you don't have this in the Western, that is very difficult. You know, where, your, uh, where the master or even the temples, they do that, or in uh, Baba Samadhi, they do that. They go around the Samadhi. This is called... Paying homage. Paying homage. Yeah. But this is called uh, Pradakshana. You, you're taking his, repeating his name with love, you go around that abode, abode of the beloved, as we call it. Told the men to go out first. All the men mandali went out uh, of his hut first, and then we women bowing down to Maharaj at his feet. We all left the hut, but we also took pradakshana like everybody did. And uh, as we were walking out, we were all wanted to see uh, where Baba was, and I was also very curious where Baba was under the tree, uh, under which shade of the tree Baba was sitting. So we, whilst walking out of the gate, we all turned around to see where was Baba. And we, I caught sight of him. A very, Baba looked very beautiful under a tree in the white, in, sitting uh, in the shade, uh, relaxed. And then when I turned, when we turned around to see again, there was Maharaj came out of the hut and he was walking towards where Baba was seated. But we couldn't now stand there and stare because that they would not like. We know that. So whilst walking, we would turn around. How would you say, stealing a glance, <laughs> you're peeping, and, uh, peeking, and so, uh, and so we saw Maharaj approaching Baba and just going near Baba and was seated. And then of course we had to walk on, and other people were also, the other devotees were also crowding around. So we had to walk and could not see them anymore when we were out of the gate. That's, so that's the third time I saw Baba under the tree. You see, the first time was near the uh, uh, temple, 
and that's I find very beautiful because we were the temp- door of the temple uh, where they worship their master and here was Baba we were facing Baba and Baba was walking right in front of us so Baba was to be our beloved yeah. and uh, so that's the that was the first time second time I saw Baba bowing down to Upasi Maharaj facing in front of Upasi Maharaj bowing down to his master and um, the third time was Baba was seated under the shade of a mango tree in Maharaj's garden in Maharaj's garden it was an orchard kind of garden and then uh, uh, the, third, the fourth time when I saw was when we went to our room then our room was facing uh, a road it was a dirt road, an ordinary road where the bullock carts go like that. And that road was uh, where the Tonga, uh, Tonga was waiting. So there was a, a commotion, you know, people running. And so I said, what's happened? So I and my sister came out of the room and we stood in the entrance of our room to see that Baba was walking very fast. He climbed the Tonga and told the Tonga to quickly start the Tonga. So before the Tonga was starting, there were some Parsi ladies and Brahmins all running to take his darshan. So his feet were like that, you know, uh, on the tonga. Uh, yes, what do you, the plank of the, st- on the, on the plank. And they were taking his darshan. Baba was telling the man to hurry up and start the horse quickly, fast. And so a few people of them, they could touch Baba's feet. And here we, I and my sister didn't know we had to go and take darshan because uh, nobody told us that. Uh, anyway, it was all such, you know, just in a minute, everything happened so fast. And anyway, we saw Baba for the f- fourth time in Sakuri. And that was Baba's uh, last visit to Sakuri when Maharaj was in body. You see, that was his last time, last day. So we were, our, that was our first day, and Baba's was the last day in Sakuri with his master, actually. So... That is that. And later than we were told. What then, was around now? No, I don't know. Maybe a year after that we met Baba, yes. Then uh, now I can tell them, uh, let's continue. So we stayed on at uh, Sakori for some time, and uh, it's a long story that my sister Baba's aunt was with us. Also, she had, was on a visit, she had come. So she told my mother that. In Baba's, and that time Baba had just started the Manzil Meem Ashram, where uh, all the men, Mandali Baba's disciples were initiated, you know. So, so in, uh, amongst the Mandali was this Gulmai's uh, eldest son, Rustam, and all, younger son also was there. So, this aunt knew about this that the eldest, uh, the Gulmai, wanted, uh, how would you say, his, her son to be married. They're looking for a right girl to marry to her, her, her son. So she suggested about my sister that she, okay. my mother asked, that she, uh, would, wouldn't she, would she like this match? Because he's also a Baba lover and okay. things like that. So my mother liked the idea and so they asked Upasi Maharaj's permission. Could, could they go to Bombay? to Mehr Baba's place. So Maharaj said, yes, they, they should go. And so my mother took my daughter, go to Bombay, to Mehr Baba's place. So Maharaj said, yes, they, they should go. And so my mother took my daughter, and her sister, and her name was Mani, I mean, Trini. But Mani had not seen Trini, because that child, when she was a very young child, was two or three years old, she had died. Yeah. So, but Baba loved, his sister, Freni, also. So, Baba gave my sister the name Freni. Oh, was your name always Mara? My, yes, from the first, that was my. That's very <laughs> So, Baba gave my sister the name Freni. He loved, he liked the name Freni. Now, when, of course, this, uh, when they were taken, I mean, when Freni was in Bombay, in Manjari Meem with Baba, this, this decided Baba also gave his, uh, what do you call it? This Blessing? Blessings, yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was arranged for their marriage and all that, so they were married in Ahmadnagar. But it so happened that time that I was in Sakuri, and my mother had come to ask Maras to, that she should take me to a Nagar uh, for my sister's wedding. But it so happened that uh, it, 
by his wish or I don't know what naturally happened. Maharaj did not want me to attend the marriage, I mean the wedding of my sister, because it so happened that uh, my cousin, my first cousin, on my father's side, Akori at that time, and uh, it so happened that when my mother came to fetch me for, to, uh, to go to the wedding, I got, uh, I had my, 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 my knee was very badly swollen and it was, it was uh, paining and I couldn't walk very well. So my, my, when my mother asked Maharaj that uh, could she take me to Nagar for the wedding, Maharaj said, uh, yes, you may, but he didn't uh, seem very pleased about it. He said, but why do you want to take her? She's quite happy here. And uh, look, she can't even walk. She's got her knee swollen. Now she's going to climb the, ra uh, the, the train and she's going to give her trouble like this. Why do you want to? She's happy. I don't take her. Like that also he said. So my mother saw that Maharaj didn't want me to go. So she wanted to obey Maharaj because uh, Maharaj is perfect master. She must uh, obey his wish. So my mother didn't take me and she went uh, back to Nagar. And the wedding took place and I wasn't present at the wedding. So after the wedding, all was, how would you say, over. Uh, it happened that Baba was asked to be there at the time of the wedding means in the house. Baba said, yes, he will be there, but not in front of the guests, but he will be in a room somewhere, rooms of the house. The wedding take, took place um, in the compound somewhere, mm -hmm. and the fire temple. I was not there, but Baba was in the house, in a room with the mandali. So what happened was, after the wedding was over, then my mother uh, was called Baba, you know, when he wants to see people, he tells them they, they can come and see him. So my mother, my sister, they all were with Baba. Gulma was with Baba, and others were with Baba. Uh, Khorshad was there. And uh, Baba said, uh, uh, why, why didn't you... They, they talked about that I hadn't come to wedding and all that. So Baba said, why didn't I come to wedding? Why, wasn't, why didn't Mera come to wedding? So they said, but her knee was swollen. Maharaj said, I should, Mera shouldn't go. And that's why my mother didn't bring me. So, and... Uh, and if Baba said, no, go and uh, bring Mera from Sakori. So my mother said, but if Maharaj doesn't send her, how can I force him to, how, how can I, um, how do you say, uh, uh, yeah, make her come? If Maharaj says, no, what should I do? Baba says, tell Maharaj, she's my daughter, I'm going to take her and bring her. <laughs> and my mother looked at Baba and said, oh my, she can't be so brave to say that to Maharaj, but she's now Baba said that, so she's going to brave. Uh, she she's going to be brave and uh, uh, say that to Maharaj that uh, she, I was a daughter and she's going to take me to Nagar. And uh, so my mother came and when she told that uh, she told Maharaj uh, that she was come to fetch me to Nagar. He said yes, he will stay here, and so it's happened that he stayed there, Baba. And then by, by the time I arrived in Ahmadnagar, Baba was already first time in Merabad. And I came to Ahmadnagar, and after a day or so, Baba sent word that we must come. College boy at the time when I was only uh, seven, eight, and I used to be at my grandmother's place. So we children all used to play, you know, many they were used to play, and then maybe he liked me at that time, and I don't know what, I don't know, I, I mean, I wouldn't know that, but he said that since school days he has seen me, because that's the only time when I was there. After that, he never saw me. As a child, he has seen me. From that time, he used to, whatever you may call it, <laughs> love me or liked me, I don't know. But anyway, uh, he, when my sister was to be married, he had asked for my hand in marriage. So those people, his family or his parents, his parents and aunts had come with, and he himself had come to attend the, my sister's marriage um, with, the, with this engagement ring. They had come with an engagement ring saying that the, on the wedding of the big sister's wedding, they wanted to engage, um, engage um, he wanted to get engaged 
to me on that same day. So that's how they had come prepared. And so uh, we, I did not know, and Maharaj knew. So Maharaj had arranged all this. My leg has to be swollen and it's pain so that I couldn't walk and I couldn't go to the wedding. And so uh, naturally you can see that it's all Maharaj is doing, that I shouldn't go to the wedding. And uh, that was the reason, you see. They had come and I had not, I should not be there. Well, after the marriage was over and all that, and then they all, the guests went back and, of course, the aunt and two of them stayed behind. That When I came from Sakuri, they should speak to me, at least get an answer from me that I agree to get married and all that. But uh, now what happened was my mother came and asked Maharaj. Maharaj said, yes, take her. So I came to Nagar, Ahmad Nagar. Uh, Amarnagar and Baba, in the meantime, before I came, he had wanted, uh, um, he asked uh, Gulma if there was a quiet place around here in Amarnagar somewhere where he could stay permanently. Is there a place she knows of? So she thought about it and she said, yes, there is a place in, in Arangaon, where Mehrabad now is. That was their property, Gulma's means her husband's. Well, anyway, I don't know, Mr. Irani, you may call Kakashri Irani, is Khan, Shah, Khan Sahib. Well, Gulmai told Baba there's this property that some Baba wanted to go and see, so he walked with the Manli to Mehrabad, okay. and he saw the place, and he liked it very much. He liked it. And uh, he said, yes, he will stay here. And so it happened that he stayed there, Baba. And then by, by the time I arrived in Amarnagar, Baba was already first time in Mehrabad. And I came to Amarnagar, and after a day or so, Baba sent word that we must come to see him. I mean, have his first darshan, we can come. So we all got ready to go, and we all taken, uh, we went in a car. My mother and Baba's aunt was there. Baba, no, Baba's aunt was not there. Baba's mother was there. See, my my mother, my. What was uh, what did Mera say about it? What was my mind about it? Probably say what I had decided, uh, how I felt about it. So um, I said uh, that I didn't want to marry, and anyway, I didn't want to marry this person at all, and and I didn't want to marry at all. This is what I said. Baba said, uh, 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 Baba said, all right. And then again he talked with mother and all that. And then uh, Baba's mother was disagreeing that, but uh, why not do such a good that, that, that you see? Why? Because my mother did not want any connection with the other in-laws, uh, with our in-laws, you see? Yeah. So we didn't never meet in their houses, they're far away. Yeah. And, and we were not allowed to meet. I mean, I can't say it. Um, there is no need. No, no clothes, and no, my mother broke up since my after my father died. My mother was very broken hearted because she there's now it's a very it's another story what happened and why she was angry with that that family. You know, uh -huh. it was because it was fault of theirs that my father died. It was so it's, it's a long story. So I won't say that. Yeah. That is why we broke up complete relation. My mother did not want with that party. So naturally, we did not meet ever. And uh, what I want to say, that boy may have, he, he grew up and that, uh, was trained for his business and all that, and was not marrying age that time, like a college boy, and so naturally like that, uh, there was no need, and we were schooling and like that, what I want to say, we had no connection. But the only one time that I really saw him was in Pune, somebody's wedding it was. And Pune has... Um, Uh, Zoroastrian community, handful. So each Zoroastrian, everybody knows what family and all that. Uh, why do you want to take this down? You want to take this down? Sure. No, no. Everything. This is not interesting. I only for your. Uh, not well, then go on with the other story. Uh, but uh, oh, can you stop taking it? Is Baba told us that we should come for his darshan. So Baba's mother and we all, my mother and Gulma, we all went. We were with Baba and they, they talked about other things. And then Baba. And my mother and Srinma said, what about this question of the, 
Mera's uh, engagement. She told my mother to tell Baba about it, what all now has happened and what is, I mean, the state of affairs, as you would say. So Baba said, yes, what about it? And so they talked, and, but I didn't pay attention much what they were talking. And so then Baba turned around and said, but what is, uh, no, I forgot to tell you about this, that when we went to Mehrabad, Baba was not uh, in the room where he was going to give us darshan. He was not there. So we were standing out waiting for Baba. So Baba came from this, you know, old bungalow where Padre lives now. That old bungalow Baba was there repairing with the mandli. He also was whitewashing and repairing. So as soon as Baba saw the car, he was washing his hand and all that. In the meantime, our car had come near the room and we had all got down and waiting for Baba and we saw Baba approaching from far, you know, coming towards us. Yeah. So we all stand at, uh, near the door and Baba came and went inside the room and was seated first and then we all went in and took Baba's darshan one by one. I was a bit shy and I don't know why I was shy. <laughs> I took Baba's darshan and I went and sat a bit further away from the other women were sitting. I was sitting just a bit near my sister and then Baba talked about other things and then he asked about, asked about my engagement and asked mother what she had decided and what we thought about it. And so he turned around to say, what, how Mera wants it, what does she think about it? So they all looked towards me and I answered Baba that I did not want to marry anyway and I didn't want to marry this special person and did not want to marry at all. So Baba smiled and said, all right, good. And in the meantime, then Srinma and my mother and the others were arguing about it, that it was a good offer and why let it go like this, and why should she say no? And so Baba said, but if she does not want it, why force it on her? And so Baba took my side and said that. And so the others, the elder, the others, elders did not then force it on me that I should get engaged. And so... I had my way. <laughs> and then uh, Baba got up and we went out of the room. And we also followed out. Yeah, yes. 1920? No, that year, I don't know. Yeah, okay. Doesn't matter. So, uh, uh, Thank you. we went, Puna and my, ma my sister was there uh, for a first baby, and her baby was born in the David Sassoon Hospital, where Baba was born uh, in the same ward. I think so, because it looks the same when I saw it this time. So, uh, and when we came home and the baby was uh, not even eight days old, when uh, Baba's telegram came to say that we must uh, come at once. So my mother, uh, quickly we all packed and Baba said, bring only one year clothes, enough for one year. So we all got pa packed and we left home just like that. As you say, a clothes, a clothes with dobi and everything, and we didn't care what was down because we had these horses at home and our servants, and all. We, just, we just didn't care what happened. And we came and to uh, Ahmad Nagar. And Ahmad Nagar then, Baba then later called us to for his darshan in Mehrabad. So we went to Mehrabad and Baba played with his baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Baba, so, Baba was so sweet and loving that when my sister brought the baby to Baba, Baba took the baby in his arms and he was playing and petting it and playing with it and cooing and oh, Baba was very loving towards the baby and, uh, and, and before that, but I won't tell you about it. just one minute. Are you shooting still there? Go ahead, shoot. So, uh, when my sister was pregnant, Baba used to tease her and tell her, um, you'll have a baby and she, it'll, be, it'll be a girl and um, she'll have a, she'll be a cockeyed girl and next time she'll, uh, Baba will tell her. When my sister was pregnant, uh, she used to have Baba's darshan and uh, Baba was talked to her and then he would tease her saying that uh, a girl will be born to you and uh, she would be cockeyed girl, you know, and my sister would be very 
upset like this. Oh my no, Baba, I don't want cockeyed girl. Then all right, no. Then you, uh, girl won't be cockeyed, but she'll have only one eye. She can see with only one eye, and she's, my sister will be so uh, uh, this thing perturbed about this. No, Baba, don't uh, give me a nice baby or not at all. And Baba used to laugh and say, No, no, you'll get a nice baby. And so uh, a nice uh, fairish child was born. No, how would you say? A nice, pretty baby, not a baby, ba baby boy was born to her. And Merwan, Baba gave him the name Merwan, his own name. And this child is not married. All his other brothers are married. This boy is not married. He's the eldest. He's not married. And, and before that, but I won't tell you about this. Just one minute. One minute. Tell her, um, you'll have a baby and it'll be, it'll be a girl and um, she'll have a, she'll be a cockeyed girl and next time she'll, uh, Baba will tell her, my sister, that uh, uh, the girl will have only one eye and one eye blind. <laughs> She used to uh, be so frightened of my sister, and Baba would go on teasing her like this. But all the time, Baba knew that a boy would be born to her, and very uh, lovely child, I mean, very handsome, I mean, very good looking child. Was. Because, you know, the father was, the father was dark skinned, that made him, more darker than that. My sister's ordinary color like that. I didn't realize Meru had a brother. Hmm. Meru's father. Ah. Meru's father, that is my sister's husband, yes. was very dark. Not like Adi at all. Yes. Uh, dark skin, like uh, more darker than Gawes or, uh, yes. or Nadja or Meru, darker than that skin. So uh, the child, when he was born, was very uh, was fair skin and uh, light brown eyes and brownish hair and we were very surprised that a fair skinned child be born by, you know. Like, so Baba all the time knowing is going to give my sister a nice, uh, handsome, I mean, nice, how about this nice fair child, boy, you know. Beautiful boy. Yeah. Uh, and he was teasing uh, uh, her, Baba was teasing my sister that you'll have a girl and she'll be a cockeyed girl and then he'd say, you old girl, I'm only one eye and you can hardly see. And my sister said, no, Baba, no, I don't know. She was very nice. I don't want that. Give me a nice child, you don't give me a tall thing. Like, Baba always liked to have fun. That's, That's the way, yes. That's what you know about that. Zambia is called something else. What is it called? Zambia's name. Zambezi. Oh, I don't know Zem very much Zem no. about South Africa. No. Because First it, it was Zambia. So much. Mm. It anyway, for Fort Jameson somewhere, and she goes to shop there, Fort Jameson. And I also don't I'm know. I'm afraid you, you uh, the wrong person. Blank <laughs> on South Africa. Yes, same year. Mm -hmm. All right, then what shall we do? Uh, are what do you, think? Are what you uh, fixed now and operating? It seems to be going on. Uh, what well, do I now do? you want to tell us then you came to Ahmed Nagar and you had Baba Starshin in Mehrabad and you stayed for a year, did you? Did you stay for a year? We stayed in Ahmed Nagar. Now Baba, I mean, we had these two horses, one for the carriage and one was this riding horse, white horse, which I still... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, what was I saying? We had these two horses, one for the carriage and one this white horse was the riding horse, but I didn't ride it very much because I was to school, so once in a while I used to ride it. Now, after we went to Ahmad Nagar, um, yeah. when, uh, yeah. when Baba called us and we went to Ahmad Nagar, we stayed in Ahmad Nagar. Baba told us to stay there. and. Uh, in the meantime, Baba had this white horse sent for to Mera, that horse, and then he, uh, then he kept that horse. And this is Kali Yuga, mm -hmm. and uh, Baba is the avatar of Kali Yuga. Yeah, Kali. So his sign is on a white horse. So it so happened that this white horse, is when Baba called us and we went to Ahmad Nagar, we stayed in Ahmad Nagar. Baba told us to stay there, and. Uh, in the meantime, Baba had this white horse sent for to Merabad. 
and this white horse was brought to Merabad and Baba kept it for some time in one of the rooms that had no steps. It was a smallish room, but the horse was nicely stable there. And uh, we were not in Merabad, we were in, Mer uh, in Ahmadnagar. But later I was told that one day Baba had this horse um, brought out and, and Baba for a minute he rode on that horse. Just for one minute he was on that horse and then he uh, then he kept that horse in this, that stable there for some time. The white horse was there in the stable for some time. And now this reminded me later on that the Kalin Kautar's uh, sign is on a white horse. You see? Kaling. Now, Kaling. Very much later in life then we, uh, we found out through the reading some uh, Kalyan is the Hindu. Kalyan. Uh, Kalyan is a Hindu book, you know, uh, Hindus, uh, saints and all. Oh, yes. in, the, in that we have a picture of the Kaling Avatar and he's on a white horse. This yuga is Kali, Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga. And yes. This is Kali Yuga mm -hmm. and uh, Baba is the Avatar of Kali Yuga. Yeah, Kali so his sign is on a white horse. So it so happened that this white horse was there and Baba rode on it for one minute. And I was very happy about it when I heard this. Did anyone else ever ride it? No, but one mistake somebody made and then Baba gave the horse away to be kept in Amman Nagar here. What, what happened that uh, Baba kept this horse, now Baba has to go away to other places, you know? He uh, used to visit, other, he wasn't per living, staying in Merabad permanently. So he went to other places and used to come back. So... Uh, one time... Uh, Baba was on, sit, on the veranda, sitting on the veranda. We were there for his darshan. We women, Mandlino, my mother, Gulma, uh, myself, we were there, and there were other disciples, how we say, other devotees there also. And there was a bhajan party. Baba just finished singing bhajan and playing the drum, like that. And he was sitting there, just like that. And then Baba, from far, he saw somebody coming on a horse horseback from far on the road. Baba was in, uh, in this, on this big veranda uh, uh, with his bhajan party and then he saw from far somebody approaching on horseback and Baba saw that he, somebody was riding the white horse that he had given to be uh, taken care of in Ahmadnagar. He told Gurmaya that he should just, they should just look after this. Baba was sitting on the veranda uh, playing the drum and the bhajan and after it, it was over, the singing was over, Baba was uh, just uh, sitting like that, relaxing and looking towards the road, and he saw someone come riding on a horse. And when he came near, Baba saw it was the same white horse that he had given to be keeping, uh, to be kept in in Ahmadnagar. <laughs> in Ahmadnagar. So when Baba saw this person riding the horse, Baba didn't like it at all. He said, "No, this person should not do this, and shouldn't have." R r shouldn't ride this horse without my permission. And so later then Baba gave this horse to Ahmad Nag, um, to the family, you know, Gulmai's family, that is Khan Saib, Kaikushru Khan Saib, he gave the horse away to him, to say, uh, saying that he can use it for any use, for Tonga, uh, they can keep the horse now. So it was given away to them and they used it for the uh, uh, carriage, as a carriage horse. Now when Baba is to, this horse was trained for carriage also when he was in Pune. Now, one day Baba called us for darshan and we came for darshan. There was other small tonga in which Gulmai came in for darshan, for Baba's darshan. And there was no, and Baba said, why didn't Dorot Mai come? She, um, my mother also was called to have darshan, come for Baba's darshan. So my mother, myself, and Korshid, we all got in this tonga, which was the only tonga available. And that tonga was the white horse tonga, the same white horse, who was a bit taller, for, who, who was the, the, the horse was tall, tall for the tonga. So the tonga was tilting behind, so we had to hang on in our seats. And if the horse made mischief, we, it was very dangerous for us because the horse was full of spirits and always made 
mischief. So he was spirited horse. And uh, we went in that tongue quite safe and sound to Baba. We had Darshan, Baba talked to us, and Baba said then he was going to what place? I don't remember. It was Ajmer, uh, some other place. And Baba said he will be some, for some time there. And he had told us that we should uh, pray for half an hour, uh, say Az Yazdan's name, God's name, Yazdan, Yazdan, uh, for half an hour. Then for half an hour we must write uh, Yazdan on a piece of paper, uh, I mean on the writing pad, uh, in fi small writing. And, as many thousand times as we can. So uh, we were all the time occupied by praying and writing Yazdan's name in Ahmad Nagar. And then Baba had told us that uh, we must um, not mix with others in the, in the, you know, there were other families staying in the compound. So then we girls always kept away from them. We, we had a room to ourselves, a big room, and Baba told my mother that he wanted to distribute clothes to the uh, poor people. I used it for the as, uh, carriage, as a carriage horse. Now when Baba is to, this horse was trained for carriage also when we were darshan for Baba's darshan. And there was no, and Baba said, why didn't Dorot might come? She, um, my mother also was called to have darshan, come for Baba's darshan. So my mother, myself, and Korshid, we all, got in this tonga, which was the only tonga available, and that tonga was the white horse tonga, the same white horse, who was a bit taller, for, who, who, who was the, the, the horse was tall, tall for the tonga, so the tonga was tilting behind, so we had to hang on in our seats, and if the horse made mischief, we, it was very dangerous for us, because the horse was full of spirits and always made mischief. So. He was spirited horse. And uh, we went in that tongue quite safe and sound to Baba. We had Darshan, Baba talked to us, and Baba said then he was going to what place? I don't remember. It was Ajmer, uh, some other place. And Baba said he will be some, for some time there. And he had told us that we should uh, pray for half an hour, uh, say Az Yazdan's name, God's name, Yazdan, Yazdan, uh, for half an hour. Then for half an hour we must write. Uh, yes, done on a piece of paper, uh, I mean on the writing pad, uh, in fi small writing, and as many thousand times as we can. So uh, we were all the time occupied by praying and writing Yazdan's name in Ahmad Nagar. Distribute uh, close to the village people. And so my mother, uh, she, when we went home, then she went shopping next day and uh, brought this. Um, big uh, stacks of cloth, you know, ah, huh? rolls of cloth, cloth. Rolls of cloth. Uh, and it was brought in a bullock cart, so many big rolls of cloth she had to bring because we had to sew many shirts. So my mother used to have a big carpet and then she used to sit in the middle of the room and, and she used to cut the size of um, shirts of small children, separate size, a middle size children taller, uh, bigger size shirts than shirts for men that were big size. And so each day she used to cut the size of uh, just children's size. And then we had to sew those clothes. And she just she stacked them up, all the cut pieces in one side, and she used to tell us that you must sew uh, so many, and so you must stitch so many. and so. We, three of us, I, myself, and Korshid, we had three machines in that room. And after our praying and uh, meditating and writing Yazdan's name, we uh, sewed these shirts for the, for the village, which Baba asked for. And uh, so nearly all our day was occupied in sewing, hand sewing, machine sewing, and we had to just keep on sewing till how many hundreds of shirts had to be sewn. Anyway, they were not quite 100 when Baba next time came and asked how many shirts are ready. And my mother said there were only 75. Oh, that's a very small number. Baba said, I want some more. Just continue sewing and sew as many as you can. And so again, when we went to Nagar after having Baba's darshan, we would 
do our meditating and writing and all that, and, and then sew the shirts and continue sewing. So all the time we were sewing, sewing, <laughs> and our minds were occupied that way. Baba saw that we were occupied in some way or another. And uh, when the shirts, then when next time Baba came, Baba asked my mother how many there were. So my mother said about, I don't quite remember the amount, maybe 200 or 300, that I don't know. But Baba said then, all right, bring prasad, that is uh, uh, top rice and chana and peanuts and all, they have to be brought in big sacks, you know, the gunny sacks, okay. that high. And uh, they had to be, this she bought in the Nagar Bazaar, and this uh, sacks full of prasad was put in the bullock cart, and uh, one bullock cart was full of uh, these shirts, you know, and the two bullock carts went to Amar Nagar. <laughs> and Baba was very happy about it, and especially Baba was happy when he's giving somebody, you know, eating things or this clothes. He's very happy to see others happy. So when the Arangao people were called, the village people, and Baba gave children shirts, then the other bigger children their shirts, and the men were giving, giving their size shirts. And she was very happy, and then Baba gave out uh, the prasad. Baba looked so happy and so beautiful, and so much um, life, you know? I mean, how do you say? Energy and that vitality, yeah. huh? Enthusiasm. En enthusiasm, that's it. So much love and enthusiasm, Baba would uh, uh, dis distribute the prasad to each one. They would come with their, uh, you know, that shirts like that, and uh, full like that, Baba, like that. So much he didn't want to give little. Always, big two, both the handfuls Baba would give, and they would go eating and singing bhajans. And we used to hear them. It's very beautiful sight. And uh, then later on, the next time Baba said, "I will call you all," and then we would stay in the ashram. So then once when we went for Baba's darshan next time, then Baba saw that we were doing our hair like loose and like that, you know. So Baba said, if you have to stay in my ashram, you can't stay like that. You have to tie up your hair and tie a white uh, a handkerchief, not a kerchief, a napkin, or a white cloth, you know, like a big kerchief. No, a scarf, like a white scarf, ordinary white um, cotton scarf, so tight round our forehead that our hair should not be seen. So I don't know what we looked like, but anyway, we agreed to do anything as long as we were living in the ashram with <laughs> in Baba's ashram. So, oh, we were very pleased about it. We went home, we had this cloth, you know, this ready, uh, this big white scarves, cotton, you know, the cheesecloth, mm -hmm. fine cheesecloth. And then we started tying our hair up and all that. And then we came to Baba next time with his hair tied. Baba said, ah, that's very good. I like you all like that. <laughs> I like it like that, you know. Now you can stay in my ashram. So next time when Baba came, then we all came with our trunks, my mother, myself, and uh, Naja and Koshid were in Pune. And that Koshid is Baba's uh, daughter. Now, what do you call her? Sister in law. Get me stuck. Sister in law. So, four of us, we stayed with Baba in the ashram. And there were not many Mandali at that time. There were only five of them, I think. You were up the hill? No, ne the never hill. up the hill. Down the hill. Mm, down the hill, always. And there we stayed. And then after I stayed there, then. Uh, one morning, it was early morning, and Baba always liked us to get up early, and I'm always a late, I never liked to get up early in the morning, and so we had to get up early.